Hello and welcome to another episode of Dear Kev on Stage, where you get the best, worst advice on the planet. As always, you can send your questions to me, Dear Kev at KevOnStage.com. You will remain anonymous, and you should because of the stuff I be saying. Ready for the question? I'm ready. Dear Kev, I'm a 50 year old female. I haven't had an orgasm in about a year or two. During these two years, I've been intimate with two guys. Neither of them have been able to truly satisfy me. Don't get me wrong, their sex isn't bad. There just doesn't seem to be any fireworks going on for me. I feel as I've been having sex for nothing. I'm now at a point where I no longer have a desire for sex at all. So for now, I'm satisfied with being alone. I tried sex toys, but they only tickled my um, uh, tickle thing and made me pee on myself. So no thanks. <laughs> I want intimacy and I want the fireworks. Is there something wrong with me or is it a phase that all women go through? I haven't begun night sweats or menopause yet, I don't think. Maybe no desire is part of it. Not sure. You you peed on yourself? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh, but I did mean to laugh. Listen, you're 50. You had a good run. Do you? Who cares about sex? My grandma's 72. I don't think she had sex in probably 35, 40 years. I hope she does. She ain't been married for a long time, and to think somebody was in there with my grandma would just break my heart. So I'm just going to tell myself no. I mean, at this point, you've had all the sex. You've done all the stuff you could do. I mean, you were a young one. You're 50. I mean, come on. You're peeing on yourself now. Your body's all doing its own thing. You're like, no, nah, man, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pee now. No, no, that's not what I want. I'm peeing anyway. I get the intimacy part, but you know they make boyfriend pillows now. It's like the shape of a man. It's got an arm and stuff. Snuggle up with that. Spray some man cologne on there. It's like the same thing. You, you, you had a good run. You know, I've been working out for a while and I'm not losing weight like I thought. It's because my, I'm about to say my menopause. My metabolism is, uh, it ain't what it used to be. And maybe your desire ain't what it used to be no more. So you know what? Think about the good days when you had them. Remember when you were young and free and full of virality and excitement. And now you're just old and, and tired and saggy, probably. Uh, mostly likely saggy. Your skin just starts giving up after a while. And you just be like, hey, I'm sagging like my pants and my skin. But remember the good times when they happen because they're all going to be gone for all of us. I know one day I'm not going to be able to do what I used to be able to do. And I'm just going to be able to be able to be thankful for what I could do when I could do it. And it's just going to be fine. You know, as it's just the way it is. But you know what? You did good, kid. Imagine me rubbing the top of your head, patting you on the back and sending you on your way. You'll be all right. Next question. Dear Kev, I've been married to my college sweetheart for over a decade, and while we both look different from how much we or while we both look different from how we did when we met, he has gained so much weight his beer belly now gets in the way during sex. Sumo sex sucks. So how do I tell him he needs to lose weight to help revive our sexy time? I'm tired of the acrobatics trying to figure out an angle that works. How could you be so shallow? You want to, you want to, you don't enjoy sex with your husband because he's gained a little weight. Oh, wow. Real mature, real mature here. Okay. We're, he's getting older. Okay. Maybe he's tired of working out. Maybe his metabolism isn't what he used to. Maybe he makes all these plans to lose weight and he puts it on the internet and then he changes his mind and people remind him of old campaigns that he did, but you don't think he thinks about it. And now you're going to take away the sweet love and the butt butt from him. And you think that's going to make him want to work out? You don't want to have sex. You're disgusted. Wow. It'd be your own wife's. Your own wife will tell you, oh, man, you're gross. You may not say it, but you say it. Oh, it hurts me. You know, because look at me. I'm in that shape. What if my wife told me the truth? Because I see my stomach when I'm doing the sex. I don't like it. That's why I make sure all the lights are off. And then I ask her to wear one of those sleeping masks like Whitley from um, a different world used to wear. Don't look at me. I'm hideous. Don't tell him nothing. You need to love him at any way. Can you imagine if a husband came here and said, man, I don't like my wife. She she's big now. What would you what would I say to him? How could I break his? How could I break your heart? I know you know what you look like in the mirror. He knows what he looks like in the mirror. Oh, my heart breaks for this poor man. Man, he's he's not getting the sex and it's not even his fault. Next question. By the way, you can send your questions to Dear Kev at KevOnStage.com. You always remain anonymous. Dear Kev, I'm co youth pastor with a guy from my church and we've known each other for years. Lately, I've been going to catch feelings for him. I don't want to ruin our friendship and mess up the youth by pursuing something. What should I do? Forget those teens. 
they're going to move away and go to college anyway. And you want, you want love. You need your pastor Wilson. Everybody deserves their pastor Wilson. Maybe he's just youth pastor Wilson at this time. And he's not fully fledged in uh, all the ways of full pastor or goodness, but let him grow into his pastor Wilson for you, the people. Don't worry about them kids. They're going to go off to college and sin anyway. We all did it. Not me. I just read the Bible every day. I read the Bible so much. Sometimes I forgot to study for class, but God gave me the answers because he was like, I respect you so much for all your studying. I'm going to pass this test for you. And I was like, thanks, God. But the rest of people were heathens, just not me and Melissa. We were celibate the whole time. Mm -hmm. Listen, don't put your, your life on hold over some kid's salvation. The Bible says, work out your own soul salvation. Let them get the word of God. You get the man of God. Okay, come on. You want to be the first lady of the youth pastorness. Don't worry about them kids. It's their parents' responsibility to make sure they learn the Lord, learn to love the Lord. Not yours. I mean, yeah, you're their pastor. Teach them the word, but not at the expense of your love life. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am, Miss Pam. Yo, want to take a quick break from the ridiculousness and tell you about Raycon. Listen, don't don't give you don't don't give your family the same old gifts, socks, ties, a boombox, you know, you, even AirPods. OK, just because Apple's a big company does not mean they have the best in quality audio and they definitely don't have it for the best price. That that moniker that belongs to Raycon. You know, I'm all about the new and the shiny, but I'm also about the good deal and the quality. And for me, Raycon's got top quality for half the price. Listen, these seamless Bluetooth pairings, comfortable noise isolating fit. You can start listening right away and keep listening for hours. Guys, you know, I've been hiking and losing weight. And with my Raycons, I'd be out there. The music be so pristine. The books, authors, they'd be so clear. I feel like I'm floating on a cloud. I'm in my own world it's fantastic listen you get the same quality of premium brands except raycons are half of the price this holiday season get them some they can use for calls or music work or play at home or on the go or pick them pick up a pair for yourself you don't have to buy gifts for other people screw them buy a gift for you your own self so here's what i want you to do go to buyraycon.com slash deer today to unlock exclusive deals up to 20 percent off your raycon order but hurry, this offer is available for a limited time only, and you don't want to miss it. That's buyraycon.com slash deer to unlock 20% off your Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash deer. Get your Raycons. Put them in your ear. Listen to premium streaming audio. Enjoy your life. And now back to the show. Dear Kev, nine months ago, I had my first child with a man I've known for 10 plus years. When I was 16, we were best friends, and he was my other half. Fast forward to now, I hate him most days, but still have a little love for him and low-key wish we could be a family for our daughter. But he's very manipulative and will act as if he wants to be in a relationship with a benefit him. But when I ask anything in return from him or to be a father to our daughter, it turns into a big fight and he blames me for us not working out and constantly is telling me that he don't, what is, doesn't want to be with me until he sees me again. Then he acts and does things like we're a family. What should I do? I need to, I need both a serious answer and something that will make me laugh as well. I can't give you a, a serious answer. He's trash. Is that serious enough for you? He's trash. Sometimes your baby's dad is trash. Sometimes your husband is trash. Sometimes both of those people are the same person. And they're both trash. Basuda in Espanol. I'm bilingual. There's a difference. There's a gospel song that I want to play for you really quick. It's going to present me from being able to make any money on this video, but I'll do it for you because I want you to know that uh, this is what you're going to have to do. You ready? I move forward. Ain't about future. Yeah. 
each way we moving one more time ah listen to molly you gotta move on men suck they're trash i don't know why y'all deal with us i really don't i look at us in the mirror and i'm like blech we don't deserve you we don't just the truth make him realize that he don't deserve you and move on i'm sorry if i didn't make you laugh and i'm sorry i had to be serious and i'm sorry y'all keep asking me real questions what do you think i am a therapist or something like that next question my friend and i are both pregnant with our first child her husband is afraid to have the sex with her because of the baby Meanwhile, my husband and I are, very, are still very active. I feel bad for her because she's sexually frustrated, but I have no idea what more advice to give her beyond what I already have. Please help me give her some advice to share with her husband. They still have four more months to go. Whew. Thanks in advance. Tell her to tell her husband he's full of himself. Let me tell you what men are worried about. <laughs> what if I hit the baby? Stop. Stop. You can't possibly harm the baby. That baby is so far from your little wiener. Let it go. You're full of yourself. It's your ego talking. It's fine. Okay, just stop. Sometimes pregnancy sex relieves a lot of pressure and the women are thankful for it. And sometimes their body is like nice when they're pregnant. I'd be like, dang, God, you out here. That butt look butter and then boobs look boober. And uh, that's tough, you know, sometimes on their psyche. But when you sex them, you're like, man, I'm still desired. Even in the state I'm in, you're like, yeah, girl. You thicker than a snicker <laughs> in the middle of the winter. I'd be like, dang, girl, what that thing is? You sitting on that pamper? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, who that milk for? The baby or me? I'm thirsty. I'll make the milk shake. They'd be like, oh, I'm still sexy. Yeah, girl, I love them stretch marks. Make that sound for her. But really, her husband's got to know, stop, bro. No, you're not that big. You're never going to be that big. You're just a regular human dude. You're kidding yourself, okay? Just stop. Take a nap. Quick reminder, you can send me your questions, Dear Kev, at kevonstage.com. Without you, there is no show. Show comes out Fridays on YouTube and Facebook and Apple Podcasts and wherever podcasts are found. And I appreciate you for listening because without you, I'd have to work a regular job and nobody wants that. Dear Kev, there's a girl from church that I really like. She's on the worship team, and every time I see her, I get nervous. But I really want to tell her how I feel about her but I don't know how to get my feelings through towards her. We talk through Instagram, but I don't know if she likes me. How do I know if she likes me and how do I approach her and tell her how I feel about her? Simple. Tell her God told you you are my wife. Church dudes love that. You know, I had a dream about you. God told me you are my wife. Tell her you are my Proverbs 31 woman. You're a virtuous woman, amen. When I see you in worship, it takes me into worship and nothing is sexier than a woman who loves God. Mm. Bosom. Just say bosom. It's a Bible word. People don't really use it anymore. But tell her that God planned for you and her to be married. Listen, I talked to a prophet. You know, I went to a conference. I talked to a prophet. And that prophet told me that you were my wife. My God. And who am I to tell the man of God that he's wrong? Amen. Now, 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 now. I love you. And I love the way you sing praises. Sing praises to the king, for he is the king of kings. Sing praises to the king, for he's the king of kings. Give him glory. Girl, I want to give him glory to you. Oh, I want to give him glory for you. Amen. I want to nestle in your garden. I want to sit in betwixt your legs and read the song of Solomon. Hmm? Come on in here today. Oh, yeah, I want to bring yeah, I want you to bring me nearer to the cross. <laughs> I want to part the Red Sea. Just be saying stuff, make it sound biblical and then trick her and manipulate her like all the good musicians do at church and get the girls and they quit that church and go to another church and do it to new girls. That's how you get a church girl. You say, girl, I'm your Boaz. You've been waiting for me. Come on in here today. <laughs> it's not going to work. Thank you guys for sending your questions in. I appreciate you. I love you. As always, I'm here every Friday. Dear Kev at KevOnStage.com for questions. Facebook, YouTube for video. And wherever you find podcasts, I'll be there, especially Apple Podcasts, because that's where it goes distributed first. But anyway, I'm out. I'm hungry. I love y'all. Bye.